Anybody out by Balboa, uh, by Park Station out there, I got him on the phone going to the airport. 162, I read you, 1279, where are you? 1279, you want to go? Put yourself available. Monday. The infamous Milford is working in the office and throws me 744, a Camry he boasts is new with a 5 o'clock medallion. I throw him a 5 and Milford looks disappointed and expectant. I just ignore it. Why am I going to pay him more for this? I head out to the lot, prep the cab, and report some bumper marks over the radio to cover my ass, then proceed to leave the lot. But before I can, the Dutchman, a mellow, eccentric 64-year-old driver who takes pride in looking 50 and lives two hours away in the Santa Cruz Mountains where he has local girls trained as his personal prostitutes, has me roll down my window and asks where I'm going. I ask him where he's going, if he needs a ride. He says 744 is his cab. Extra tip indeed. It's slow this morning, and I've been feeling competitive lately for some reason. It's stressful and juvenile, but I give in to it. It might be that I'm currently caught up with money and debts, and without that, there's nothing left to look forward to or distract me. I have arrived at the center of the onion. Being a cab driver offers nothing more in terms of life goals than looking for a fare and or completing a bagged fare in the very short term. But this is what I signed up for and want. This is my sand mandala. If there's one thing I took from 9-11, it's the sight of all those papers from the World Trade Center flying around. What do spreadsheets and memos mean at the end of the day? Nothing. I recently sent my ma a good new recording of my band, Spermula. All of our music is completely off the cuff, and we never actually write, and consequently never repeat, a song. Very apt. Ma, not surprisingly, did not like the heavy, angry music. All the songs lately have been about Christian's ex who screwed him up good. Ma said, where are you going with this music? Going? Where is there to go? Where am I or anyone going with anything? Ultimately, to the grave. Dad taught me that a man's worth in life is measured by what he's done for society. Well, people need a ride. 9.15 a.m. The Android phone installed in the taxi running the Cabulous app goes off. Cha-ching! 2407 Webster. Dispatch. Cool enough. I accept. I'm close, and this is from Citizen's Cab proper. I'll earn some points for helping the company out. I get to 2407 fast, and out pops a jittery but nice dyke sporting a tweed blazer. Seems Ellen is late getting to her lawyers to entertain an insurance settlement from travelers. It's been a three-year battle since her apartment building caught fire due to a dollar store extension cord her landlord put too much load on. She tells me her dog died in the fire and she lost all her blazers, except for the one she's wearing. So, Ellen goes on to say she only shops at the Salvation Army now, and for a period after the fire, was a client of the Red Cross. They set her up in a hotel for a while and gave her money, etc. I relay that I too was once a post-fire client of the Red Cross, and we go on to bond about how great they are. Anyway, seems Travelers has the worst reputation for drawing out settlements and wearing you down. I get Ellen to her appointment in the financial, Montgomery and Bush, pretty fast, but about 10 minutes late, and we part warmly, with me $15 richer. Noon. Cha-ching! 1300 Laguna. Another dispatch. I'll take it. This is in the Western Edition projects, though, and likely a short ride. I get there fast and call passenger. Shortly, a 50-something white woman comes out, followed by a 20-something pretty girl with Betty Page bangs in slippers, PJs, and covered in a blanket. She's got a hospital wristband on and betrays freshly scabbed cut marks on her wrist. A cross, not along the vein. They get in, and in a European accent, Mom asks me to take them to the roadway inn. This is a shitty hotel only a few blocks away. 
Serendipitously, I actually stayed there when the kids and I were clients of the Red Cross. We called it the Road Rat Inn, though. It was weird. One night, I had the Do Not Disturb sign on the door, and the dude who runs the place walked in on me naked without knocking. I yelled at him and he ran out. The next morning, when I checked out, there was an older couple checking in. I told them to watch out for the pervert desk dude right in front of him. He proceeded to vociferously lie about having walked in on me, then changed his story when pressed to say he thought our room was leaking water from the bathtub. Right. We hadn't even used the shower or tub yet. Freak. So, the fair ends up to be 5.15 and mom starts going through her purse and counting pennies. She gives me five ones and 15 pennies exactly. No tip. Damn Europeans. This is America. You play by our rules when coming here. That's just rude. No wonder Betty Page is so fucked up. 2.40 p.m. I got time for one more fair. Cha-ching! 1981 Union. Lululemon. iPhone. This one is not from Dispatch. It's direct from someone's cell. And, hmm... I'm on Fillmore in Pack Heights and will very likely catch a flag here at this time. And my cabulous suitor is on Union, ten blocks away, with empty cabs going by every two seconds. Should I take this? Will the flag be there? I reluctantly accept the call, but keep an open mind to canceling if I see a flag, if they don't cancel first. I get as far as Union and Fillmore, and suddenly a Mexican dude is trying to flag me at the corner. I'm close to Lululemon now, and resign the following through. I feel bad though. There's no way to turn off the top light promoting me as available, unless you turn on the meter. Jorge probably thinks I'm dissing him. Oh well. I finally get to the corner of Union and McCannon, and a typical cow holler chick is hailing me there. But she's looking at her phone. It's my fabulous flag watching me arrive on the real-time map on her app. Heather gets in. SFO, please, and I'm late. I thought my flight was at five, but it's at four. Can we make it? Score. She has no bags. I would have never thought this was an airport. Guess I got good karma for not canceling on that. I try to be positive and reassure Heather that since she's not checking the bag, we have a good chance of getting her to SFO in time for her flight. She then settles back in her seat and relaxes with a soothing vibe. I check her on the rear view. She's nice and kind of pretty. Hmm. Not typically cow hollow. The nice and soothing vibe part, that is. Anyway, turns out she's flying up to Seattle to get her stuff and then drive back down to San Francisco. She's moving here and just secured a job at Lululemon. Go yoga pants. Heather and I eventually hit the straightaway on 101 South at Candlestick, and suddenly all three lanes lock up. This is unusual for this time. Jesus is at dispatch now, and comes over the radio warning that the two right lanes on 101 South are closed due to an overturned car. Shit. Where was Jesus two minutes ago when I could have diverted to 280 South? Not only will Heather not make her flight now, but I'm also going to be late back with the cab, and that's 15 bucks. Even if I have to pay the night driver the $15 late charge, this fare will likely land around 60 bucks and still make economic sense. We eventually pass the accident and gawk at an overturned Mustang in a sideways landed Jeep Cherokee amidst all the emergency vehicles and debris. We're moving fast now. Heather might still make her flight, but I see my 101 northbound returning traffic sucks due to rubbernecking. I'm gonna have to take 280 back and pray. I drop $60 richer, cash, and recklessly speed back up 280 North quite successfully. I resign to just hitting the expensive Amico near the lot on Bayshore, though. I gotta cut my losses. I fill the cab at 4.49 a gallon, and finally make it into the lot exactly at 3.35 p.m., five minutes late. But no one's out front waiting. Sweet! I get up to the bulletproof glass where I'm to check out and find Milford working the window. Jesus is still back on the radio. Milford doesn't seem to realize there was a question of me being late, and I realize Jesus has done nothing to help. I just got lucky that the night driver hasn't shown up yet. I accept. You guys have a nice day.